They say you never get a second chance at making a good first impression, but when it comes to the front of your house, it's making first impressions every day. You can colour up, clean up, give it a bit of a makeover and start afresh. And the best thing about it, it's not as hard as you think. This house, well, it's a classic example. The owners have put heaps of time and effort into it on the inside, but you certainly wouldn't know it on the outside. You know that same mutton dressed up as lamb? Well, this little house is the exact opposite. We got a cry for help from the owners, so we answered the call. Hello, Carmelina. Hi, Tara. Hey, Carmelina. Hi, Jason. How are you? Good, Great good. house. Thank you. Even if it isn't finished. It is not finished yet. <laughs> How long have you been here? About six years now, oh. yeah. When Carmelina and her husband bought this place, they were keen to fix the interior with extensive renovations, which included knocking walls down and a brand new kitchen and floors. The results are just stunning. Now a few years on, the front of house fix up is a distant pipe dream, with two active kids and Carmelina working a full time job. Well, Carmelina, what did. plans did you have as far as colours go? We wanted something um, probably modern, in a grey, dark mm -hmm. grey, um, mm -hmm. maybe some white um, edging, mm -hmm. just to you know give it some street appeal. I reckon we could turn this from the ugly duckling into the beautiful swan to match the inside of the house. Gorgeous. And Thank you know you. they say it's all about first impressions. So if you skip off for the day, I reckon we'll make a good first impression on you. you Excellent. Come back later oh, I can't wait. That would be fantastic. <laughs> all right, we've got to get to work. Head no, off. Thank and we'll you so much. Make it happen. This is truly a blank canvas. We've got an abelia, a half dead rose and a half-dead tree. Now, this is called an orchid tree. If you look at it closely, I can explain why it's half-dead. It's a deciduous tree, so it should be covered in new leaves right now, but it's dying back. And trees usually die from the tip back, so all this here is never going to recover. And if you look at the trunk, you can see the bark's all loose because it's shrinking inside and this is falling off. So the humane thing to do is let this guy go. of an old driveway like this, you might think about maybe going over it, maybe even replacing it. But to be honest, in most cases, you can probably get away with just cleaning it. A pressure hose like this will do the job nicely. You can get it done in around an hour for a driveway of this size. It comes up so well, almost as good as new. Trust me, you'll kick yourself if you didn't do it sooner. If you walk up and down the street here, or pretty much any street in Australia, you'll see the garden beds simply just hug the fence line and maybe across the front of the house. Well, we're not going to follow that formula with straight lines. We're going to do a circle. It'll make the lawn more interesting and the garden beds narrower at the front and wider in the corners. Even though it's called a turf cutter, it's a pretty good dirt cutter as well. I'm putting a head of course of pavers around the outside of this lawn. I want it to sit flush with the grass. So we went around once, got rid of the grass. The second time, I've dug a little trench. So the soil comes out nice and easy, saving me time, because I've already paid to hire that. Lucky for us, Carmelina's already had the house rendered. This was an old red brick house. Now with this smooth coating, almost looks modern. Now it needs a coat of paint. Now what we need to do first of all, you can see here, when I rub my finger under here, you can see all that sand that falls away. If that goes into your paintwork, it's just going to give you a pretty shabby result. So just use any wood offcut to smooth over. It can be pretty confusing knowing which paint to use for which surface. So for the outside, I keep things simple and just use Weather Shield. Now the great thing about this paint is it's designed for the outside, it's designed to last, and it goes on a whole range of different surfaces. You can paint it on metal, so you can use it for your gutters. It goes on timber, so you can use it for your barge boards, even your window frames and front door. And it also goes onto masonry and onto rendered surfaces like this. Now because this is a pretty porous surface, I need to seal it up. And also I'm going for a really dark grey paint. So I've tinted a one-step primer undercoat. That's just going to make it easier to paint and give me better coverage. It'll also make the paint last longer, so Carmelina won't be having to repaint this house every five years. Later in the show, my circular creation is going to start to finally take shape. While Tara finishes the painting in a shade of grey, 
that's really going to showcase my handiwork.